at the University of Wyoming, we focus in astronomy on a few fields. We think that's important for us to be experts in just a few fields and not cover every single topic. So if you're interested in the science we do here, we do a lot of extragalactic astronomy. Um, that covers star formation in nearby galaxies, star formation in distant galaxies. Um, we do cosmology here as well. Uh, it's a, maybe a, a strange way to think of extragalactic astronomy, but so cosmology at the further, farthest reaches of the universe. Um, we also do exoplanets uh, astronomy. This is a new field for us. Uh, Professor Jane Condell is a theorist who works on simulations um, to try to model how a planet forms inside solar systems outside our own solar system. And she uses the, um, the new Wyoming supercomputer that we have next door in Cheyenne. This is a new facility that uh, the University of Wyoming has guaranteed access to 20% of the time. So that's a really um, uh, excellent opportunity for us and our students that come to our program. And then we also have an astronomer who uh, builds instrumentation for telescopes. So he'll build cameras and spectrometers for wire or for other telescopes. And then we have astronomers who are experts in quasars. So these are, uh, you know, luminous objects that can be brighter than um, the central engine of a galaxy that can be brighter than the, the galaxy itself. And you can see those easily all the way across the cosmos. Hi, I'm Mike Brotherton, a professor of astronomy at the University of Wyoming here in Laramie. My specialty is quasars. Uh, quasars are a kind of active galaxy found in the universe. They are the most luminous objects uh, that we can see across space and time. They seem to be uh, objects powered by supermassive black holes in the centers of distant galaxies. And as they consume surrounding gas, that gas heats up. And from a region the size of a solar system, more or less, you can get an energy output more than an entire galaxy. So they're really exciting, interesting places with extreme physics. So I've worked in a lot of areas of astronomy. I'm an observational astronomer, but I've used wavelengths, everything from the, the radio and the infrared to the optical and the x-rays. So I study stars, star formation, galaxies, and chemical abundances in galaxies. Lately, I've begun a big program using the WIRO telescope to study the binary properties of massive stars. These binary massive stars merge together, sometimes late in their lifetime, and they produce certain kinds of supernova and gamma ray burst explosions. And astronomers really don't know how all of those occur. So by mapping how often massive stars have companions and how close they are, this lets us understand how common these explosive events in the universe are going to be. All the research I've done up to the point where I came to the University of Wyoming has been theoretical and computational. So my thesis project was um, theory and computation studying radiative transfer in protoplanetary disks. So studying how planets perturb the disks they're in and how that affects the structure of the disk and how that affects how stellar light illuminates the disk and how that affects the planet formation process. Um, so, you know, calculating the effect of that feedback on the planet formation process. After getting my thesis, I continued following that path of research, continuing on doing theory and computation, modeling radio transfer. Um, and now that I'm here at the University of Wyoming, um, we have th these uh, great telescope facilities, uh, WIRO and um, Red Buttes Observatory, where you know they're, they're right nearby, um, you know, close to campus, and um, you know, uh, easy access to telescope time. So um, I'm starting, beginning to make use of those uh, instruments to do observations of transiting exoplanets, um, both to help discover new transiting exoplanets and to follow up on the properties of known exoplanets to try to characterize their atmospheres.